Hello everyone, I'm Forrest. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a little while since my last upload and I'm sorry, I've been a little bit busy, but I promise I will be more regular going forward. Today's video is gonna be about footwork mistakes and why you should fix them. I will show some examples of the mistakes and I'll explain why they're a bad idea and what you should generally do to fix them. Let's get started. Now for this first one, sliding your feet, it's very common, especially even advanced people will do it too. But when you slide your feet, there's a couple issues with it. One, it's harder to change tempos and have a fast second half of your step if it's always sliding. It's typically happening with the back foot when you're advancing. If the back foot's always sliding, it's hard to go fast with it. You're not gonna have a very fast back foot. That's gonna lead to a possible false action or a real attack out of it. So make sure you actually pick up your feet so you can choose to move it slowly or you can move it quickly, but it's gonna allow you to have more options with tempo change. Also, you wanna make sure that you're not sliding it because you could be creating a pattern, which kind of goes back to the other thing I said. If you're creating this pattern of step slide, step slide, step slide, it's very easy, if your opponent's decent, to catch on to this pattern and to catch you at a weak moment during the pattern, attack you in preparation, counter attack, et cetera, et cetera. They'll be able to read your action and you don't even know what you were doing. So don't create this typical rhythm having step slide, step slide, slide your back foot, it's not a good idea. Another typical footwork problem is the rise and fall in a press forward, especially for foil fencers and saber fencers as well. If you are rising and falling, rise and falling, the rise moment, you're not gonna be able to do anything quick. If you're standing with straight legs or even somewhat floating off the ground, how are you going to lunge quickly, flesh quickly, change direction because they caught you in a, in a vulnerable moment? How are you gonna do that? So the only moment that you're kind of set to do anything is in the fall moment. So that means half the time you can't do an action very well. So it's gonna be slow and it's gonna be just using gravity instead of actual power from your legs. So try and make sure when you're practicing your footwork that you're staying low the entire time and not allowing yourself to fly up, rise up in between every step. It's a bad habit and it's gonna lead to a lot of mistakes. If your opponent knows how to capitalize on it, you're gonna run into some issues. Some people have a habit of over committing their weight distribution to their back leg as they're making a press. Now this is very typical to have weight on your back leg, especially if you're going forward, if you're making advances. But to over commit on the back leg can lead to problems. You can get caught in preparation very easily. Also, it typically have a, a bit of a wave effect going on with your footwork when you lean back, because every time you're gonna step forward with your front leg, since you're already committing backwards, you're probably gonna lean back a little bit more just to take that step forward. So when you're doing offensive presses and you're just trying to invite someone to get close, you don't wanna overdo it and be so far off balance that you can't handle that invitation that you're trying to get them to come into. You want to be balanced enough to still finish an attack at a good time and not be late. So you don't get caught in preparation by leaning back too far. Straighten it up a little bit, balance out between the front leg and the back leg. Now, this mistake is very simple and easy to make, and it kind of goes in with a good thing to do with defense, but a lot of people go too far with it and they cause this to happen. When you're on defense, typically you want to have a little bit of a lean forward, just a little bit, nothing excessive. 
but a lot of people when they start to do that they lean forward they also extend the back leg so as they're retreating they're setting up their defense they're leaning forward a little bit their back leg is straight when your back leg is straight you can't lunge in preparation there's no pull power off the back leg everything is on your front leg and your front leg can't do everything your back leg is going to help pull you into better bigger faster retreats and your back leg is also going to push you into a good lunge so when you're on defense yes you can lean forward a little bit on that defensive action but do not sacrifice your back leg while doing so keep it bent trust me The next one's a little bit silly, but it is a pet peeve of mine. So your coach, the club that you train at, may teach you to put your back arm up in a more classical position. Maybe they ask you to put it down to the side. I teach either or of these depending upon the situation with the student. But one that I very much dislike is putting the back arm behind the back. I see this sometimes and it, it bothers me so much. So problem is it typically makes the person lean forward more. Two, it drives that shoulder kind of up and forward. So a lot of people are like this. this. They're not keeping their back straight. It's hard to do it. It's uncomfortable. They, so simply put, don't do it. Try one of the other positions, but do not put it behind your back. Now this one seems self-explanatory, but I'm gonna go over it anyway. When you're making a lunge, you cannot let your back foot slide up with you into that lunge. If you do that, your back foot is like an anchor. If your anchor leg, your back foot, slides up, you have nowhere to get recover back to. And if you try to recover, let's say you attack, you lunge, you miss, maybe you get parried, something like that happens you slid all the way forward, you're probably only gonna be able to lean backwards to try and get out of there. You have to make sure that you keep your back leg back. Simply put. Another problem that happens on the lunge is that after lunch, maybe it's a beautiful lunge, a great lunge, but let's say you need to keep fencing, you need to recover out of that lunge, I've seen so many times people go for the lunge and they recover using mostly their torso. They pull their upper body back. So that way when they recover, they have too much weight on their back leg. Now, when you recover, you need to keep a little bit more of a balance, 50-50 split between the two legs. If you put like 80% of your weight on your back leg, you're not gonna be able to retreat because what leg goes first when you retreat? Your back leg. So if you put all of it on your back leg, how are you going to retreat? You're not. You're just going to fall back, jog back. You're gonna go front leg first. You're gonna have to do a crossover. So when you recover, you need to make sure you're pulling with the back leg, but you don't allow your torso to lean back when you do it. Now I often see my younger ones, my younger students make this mistake, but I've seen adults make it too. When you make a lunge, especially those who have been taught to have a more traditional on guard position, so they have their back arm up here. Like I said before, this is fine. But do not have this big throw, I like to call it a rainbow arm. Don't have this rainbow arm throw on the lunge because typically it's going to drive way too much of your back half, your back shoulder forward. It's gonna make you lean forward in your lunge, putting you off balance, creating an opening on your back target. So if I lean forward excessively like this, if someone knows how to flick, they now have a nice wide open back target to hit. And Recovery is just gonna be so slow. You're gonna have such a slow recovery because all the weight that went forward 
now has to come all the way back. So keep your back straight when you lunge. That's why you hear coaches yell this all the time. Keep your back straight. Don't let yourself fall forward when you're doing your lunges. Now, this next mistake is more typical for an FA fencer, but I've seen plenty of foil fencers and saber fencers make this mistake as well. They take their back knee and they turn it in, so it's kind of facing their opponent a little bit. So their hips aren't open, and what happens is you're gonna have bad change of direction, and you're gonna have a compromised hip and knee gait here. So if your hips, are gonna move around too easily because they're kind of closed in, you're not gonna be able to change direction. You might also fall back into your knee a little bit on the back leg. So there's a lot of like little problems with having your back leg turned in. It just weakens what you're gonna do. So normally it's your defensive actions that are gonna suffer when you turn this in. So every time I try to retreat, my back leg isn't gonna be able to pull me as far or as quickly with as much control as I normally would want. So make sure you're keeping your hips open and knees open when you're doing your footwork. This one's pretty common. A lot of people tend to bring their feet together when they're advancing or retreating. When you're doing your footwork, it doesn't matter what direction it is, you have to keep space between your feet. If you have space between your feet, that probably means bending your knees is more comfortable, more, it's easier to do. So also having your uh, space between your feet means you have better weight distribution. So that means you can change directions quicker if you need to go quick and it allows you to have some power to go into a lunge. If you have your feet together, you're probably gonna like throw a leg instead of like actually pushing or kicking a leg, which means you're gonna be slower. You're just relying on gravity a little too much when you bring your feet together. So keep your feet apart, distance between the feet, not too wide. Obviously too wide is just as big of a problem as together. So you need shoulder width apart. That's on average what you're looking for when you're doing your footwork. Okay everyone, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any further questions, please comment below or you can contact me on Instagram. You can post a video of you fencing about or doing some footwork and I will critique it and I will be happy to give you some advice. So everyone, have a wonderful day. Keep training hard. I'll see you at one of the future tournaments. Goodbye.